we'll be here next March 10th, 2011, <laughs> Golf Town Planning Board meeting. Welcome, everyone. Good evening. I would like to take this opportunity, and uh, as I stated before, that we have, or will have, shortly after Friday, this Friday, two, two new members of the board, John Heichel and Mark Warden, they are here in the audience. I'm going to let them have an opportunity for two or three minutes to tell us who they are to start out the meeting. John, you're first. Thanks for uh, starting everything off with me here. <laughs> uh, my name is John Heichel. I live at 483 Mass Road. I served two terms on the budget committee for two three-year terms, finished that, and decided to run for the planning board. Um, as I said at candidates night, I believe, um, <clears throat> planning of Goffstown uh, intrigues me, and I wanted to be a part of the way that uh, plans are done. Um, I want to restore property owners' rights. I want to give them the, uh, the uh, courtesy due whenever they come in front of this board to request uh, a change or a building or any type of use of their property and, uh, and work with each and every one of them. And so presently, I own an auto repair shop on Mast Road and I serve in the New Hampshire House as Vice Chair of Transportation Committee. Uh, so I have a lot of access to um, state government affairs and things that I can bring with me to this committee uh, that I'm sure will help me and hopefully all of us. You still on the EDC, John? Yes. Good. Can you help us with the 10-year road plan? <laughs> Done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. Good. <laughs> Just got to fund it, that's all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Mark? Well, yeah, thank floor. you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, Mark Warden. I live over on Mount Nash, which is crossing St. Anselm's College. And like John, I'm a state rep right now, so I'm not unfamiliar with this boring reading here. So I at least know how to read the statutes when we get involved with that. Um, professionally, I'm in the real estate business. I've been for about 15 years. Right now, I just do general real estate, residential only, and mostly here in Hillsborough County. But for 12 years, I worked for a builder developer in a different state. So I'm not, uh, again, not unfamiliar with plans, drawings, that sort of thing, which will help a little bit. But I still have a long, long way to go to learn the, the packets that were given me tonight, Patty. But glad to be here. All right. Should, be, should be a fun ride. All right. Welcome. welcome. Thank you. Mark. Welcome. Now, um, Steve Dutton is still our alternate. Right right here. Right yep. here. Welcome, Steve. Hey, Steve. Um, he does serve on the uh, EDC. As I recall, he wasn't at the meeting we nominated him. <laughs> yeah, yes, he he wasn't. No, no, I came to he, the next one. Uh, he, was officially he, he is in the town report, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Smiling so, as it so was. So he got nominated. Um, <laughs> one way or I would also like a consideration from the board, and I'd like to... poll the board and whether I'd like to invite Lowell Van Ruden who lost in the election to be a become an alternate on the board because we can always use his continued expertise he was the grandfather of the board so to speak at the time and uh, before I did that I wanted to feel out the rest of the board members whether that would be appropriate or not sure he's interested is he willing interested is yeah okay then I will do that by email probably in the next couple of days see if he wants to serve um, I also wanted to talk briefly before we start our meeting about uh, what I call special projects for the coming year. And there was one item that I found in my notes that I thought we want to think about in the next couple months to, to proceed on it, and that is any um, dealings we might want to proceed with in terms of Hillsborough County and the property on 114. We talked about it, but we kind of put it in put it aside so that we could study it for a year and I want to I want the, the board's consensus to to maybe come up with a committee to try to work with Hillsborough County to see what it is that they'd like to do and if we can assist them in some fashion uh, through the planning process Brian uh, I'll just make a comment I think that's a great idea I, I actually just was at Hillsborough County yesterday meeting with Derek and uh, some of the folks over there um, 
discussing this very topic and, and what types of next steps we can um, move forward with. So um, I think getting going with uh, something uh, that, that could work together with the, uh, the officials over at the county would be good timing. I have had a volunteer willing to take on a special project for the board. I think we ought to wait for forming any special committees till yeah. we have our new board. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just putting it out on the table. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Then we'll take it up the uh, first order of business this evening, which is the election of chair and vice chair. Any nominations from the floor? <coughs> Nominate um, Allen. I'll second it. For chair. For chair. With seconder. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm not hearing howls of protest either. No, I'm neither There's no I. howls of protest. Um, I certainly look forward to the challenge, and it, to me it's a lot of fun, and it is a challenge at times. Um, I'm certainly willing to do that. Um, are there any other nominations for chair? Move the vote. All right. Move the vote. All those in favor of Alan Dayton be the chairman of the planning board for the coming 2011-12 term, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I'm it. I'll nominate Tim Redman for vice chairman. I'll second it. A motion by Phil and seconded by Carlos to nominate uh, Tim Redman as vice chair. Is there any discussion on that motion? Are you willing? To I'll accept it. Yes. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Tim. And if anybody doesn't have any special affair that they serve on, you know, call us who do conservation. We all have our own little thing. Barbara does New Hampshire, Southern, Southern New Hampshire planning. Um, Carl is. I can't remember what you're on. I'm Southern New Hampshire. Southern, Southern New Hampshire. Hampshire. So everybody has some kind of special interest that they serve in, and they all have an opportunity to speak from time to time about any event that they think is pertinent to the planning situations. Get into our regular course of business. I'll take up the, the uh, planning board minutes of February 24, 2011. Does anybody have any amendments, corrections, or additions to the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. Seconded. Motion by Phil, seconded by Tim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Abstaining. 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 Two abstentions. Excuse me. Went to my head there for a moment. Now, both of you, both of the alternates this evening, this evening are voting members of the board. Under old business, Ryan, map 38, lot 36, site plan review hearing for a proposed proposal to reinstate the use of religious assembly in a historical church building, the former vestry shop, Granite State. Christadelphians. Christadelphians. I'm not an English fellow, that's for sure. We Applicant and the United Church. Methodist Church owner, located on 18 North Mass Street Zone Village Commercial District, and it was continued from January 27, 2011. Brian. Mr. Chair, if it's okay with you, uh, f before we get into the old business, I'd like to um, address the letter from Derek Horn um, that was included in your sub packet that was on your table today. I think we want to wait till 715 anyway. It's a correspondence item that um, <coughs> passing along to you and um, asking for some discussion. Uh, Which one is that? Is this some is this a reference to Scott Busia matter? Yes. Oh, I didn't see that on the agenda. That's just an, an item of correspondence. Okay, you have the floor. Uh, this is basically uh, a question came up to the <coughs> zoning code enforcement officer 
regarding the location of a well to be placed or actually which has already been placed uh, in uh, the subdivision at uh, Durango Drive um, they basically had to make a decision um, and go with it I think the the well as it was shown on the approved subdivision was in an area that was in a no-cut zone and therefore they um, didn't want to go in there they had I think gotten in trouble for going into a no-cut zone previous to this and so they didn't want to get into trouble again um, so they decided to um, go ahead and place the well outside of that no-cut zone the the two little map pictures that are on your on your uh, p front page there of his letter the top one shows where the well was approved on the subdivision and the the hashing with um, there's a kind of a curvy bounded line that um, outlines that that's the no cut zone area and so that well was within that no cut zone and then uh, if you look on the bottom picture they move that well and you can see the large circle with the the dot in the middle that's where they um, ended up moving it um, now that location um, encroaches upon a drainage slope and drainage easement um, the and I, I wish I had my PowerPoint tonight I <laughs> my computer and um, and projector are locked away in the IT room so um, I'm, I'm without that but uh, basically there's a slope and drainage easement line that extends I'll sort of try to show you here Brian they do have the plans in front of you. oh okay yeah in front of you you have the plan on the top The slope and drainage easement is basically this dotted line here that crosses here. Um, and the well radius, the 75 foot well radius, encroaches into that a little bit. Now, previously, the board had allowed Steve Griffin to um, deal with this through a well radius liability form. Um, for a, a different circumstance and I attached some minutes of uh, that previous decision it's uh, there's three pages of minutes it's the third page um, and basically the planning board authorized him to waive the required well protective area um, when on adjacent properties um, so this doesn't extend onto an adjacent property, um, but not including any public right-of-way. It doesn't include public right-of-way. It's just an easement on the same property. So this being a, a different scenario, we felt it important to come back to the board and just get approval from the board to be able to deal with this. Um, we hope that uh, it can be dealt with in the same similar fashion, but since it wasn't clearly stated, in a previous decision that that was okay we felt it important to come back to the board for your okay on that so uh, our plan is to go ahead and work with the property owner to just have them fill out a waiver of liability as well as a uh, and it, a New Hampshire DES release form for the protective well radii and, and, and that that would be sufficient for uh, this site and for the location of the well. This is not right. Now I'll answer any questions that you have. Like that? Is this line right here? Question. So this question. Uh, Barbara. So the issue that distinguishes this from the previous one is that it's in the slope and drainage easement area. Correct. The uh, the other one it the radius extended onto someone else's property. And this one stays on the same property but crosses over into the easement area. Um, and you, Derek sort of tried to draw on the map. You can see uh, there's a line of what looks like a bunch of stones, but 
it's supposed to be riprap. That's where the drainage area is um, through there. So it doesn't, it doesn't go into the actual drainage area, mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. but the easement area was defined as a larger area than that. And so, and if you, and Megan can probably address drainage if you had questions on that as well. Just as a note, in looking at this map, is a septic system in the drainage easement also? Is not. Tim. Well, then is the septic in the 4K septic area, Meg? Doesn't look like it is to me. The 4K septic area is marked out here on the small diagram. Shows it above the uh, slope drainage. And it looks to me like the septic is not even in the 4K septic area on this diagram. No, the 4K septic area on the above diagram is a proposed drawing of where a potential septic could go, but further test, test pits were done and they moved the location. They moved it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like you can see in the, in the top drawing, there's looks like one, two, three test pits on that lot alone that I can see. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay. guessing yeah. they must have had the, the data from one of the test pits was acceptable and they were able to move the location. Yeah, the 4K area is just for subdivision purposes. Yeah. And I, I, I suspect that you've reviewed this and you're okay with it? Yes. There, uh, the outside limit of the 75 foot protective well radius is about 50 feet from the <coughs> drainage swale. So really the portion of the radius that overlaps into the easement is really a slope easement, not so much the drainage easement. And it's a slope easement actually for a future connection road because as you can see, this is at the cul-de-sac and I don't know if you remember back when this was approved, but a connection right of way was left um, to another large parcel. So there really is no slope there now except for probably a small slope off the access road that reaches the detention pond. So I didn't see that to be as a concern. Okay. Carlos. Megan, there's a stamp on here that says Town of Goffstown with a scribbled signature. What is that? I believe um, how the process works is that Mike Yergo reviews septic designs and stamps them either before or after the state does. Before, before, okay. Couldn't, before. We, could, before. couldn't they make that? The state. Couldn't they make that stamp a little more self-explanatory as to what in the heck it is? <laughs> I can ask him. I, you know, I, I, I thought he had a stamp that actually said like what it, what it was. So I haven't. I'll have to ask him. Maybe he has more than one. Use that one. I don't know. But um, okay. I can ask just him curious. Can try and have him have a different stamp made that. I just, maybe the other one was out of ink, and that's the only one he had left. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't okay. ask him on. So. All right. Any other members of the board have a questions, ref references? Well, Radius? What do you need from us, Brian? Uh, a similar motion as what was in the uh, minutes of the meeting back in 2005. So if you look on the page that says page one of nine up the top and Goffstown Planning Board, the little red star that's next to your um, with the underlined mm -hmm. um, something to the effect of allowing the uh, planning and economic development or the town planner to um, waive the required protective area when on the same site um, within or you can just reference in this instance if you want um, as long as it doesn't encroach upon drainage areas and only slope areas or something something to that effect. We're just looking for uh, authorization for the town planner to go ahead and work with the property owner to fill out a w waiver of well liability um, and have him submit a New Hampshire DES release form for protective well radii and that's it. I know that was kind of long and hard to explain, but or hard to say in a motion. The first time, go. Okay. Oh, you Tim and then me. Excuse me. Tim. Well, the, in the minutes it says here it authorizes uh, Steve to allow him to uh, have his well radius over the abutting property line. Well, that's no longer the case. The well radius is entirely on the property. Correct. So that's not. That, that to the this was a different right. lot. 
This one is more to have the well radius go over the easement area. You re basically relocate it on the same lot. I'll make a motion. All right, Barbara, you have questions. Well, make it, you've made a motion, so. He hasn't made a motion yet. Well, in case you want to discuss it, I was going to wait. Well, this example from the correspondence has to do with this lot or a different lot? It's a different lot. A right. different area, okay. different, a different lot. Project. Same, same, yeah. and Comparison. same I, of, I understand yeah. that. Right. But it was actually the, the waiver that was granted in 2005 was because there was, it was private property and there was the standard release for town property. You are now technically approving a waiver of the well radii for a drainage and slope easement. And you need to be very specific about what it is you are applying the waiver for or you are going to see well sited all over lots. And I understand the issue of the town and the, the, the town and the road and sometimes that happens and salt and that's yeah. how we along with a number of other communities deal with it. And I'm not saying I'm against this. Yeah. But it seems to me that motion is way too unspecific okay. to be able to distinguish it for this lot. And I'm not saying I'm not opposed to it, but that kind of a motion? My, my suggestion would be then that we make it specific to this lot and, and that way there's no open-endedness for future problems over easements and things like that because again we need to remember that this issue is arising because this builder violated provisions of his plan in a section of development that it's not clear to me would be an issue for just drilling this well you know I mean I don't is there really anything left there that he would have to cut for this proposed well does anybody know that or is this a question of snow and it's easier to locate it somewhere else and start building. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I believe that there was a, wasn't there a diagram that showed the tree line on there? Is that, is that the same tree line that, or that curved line that? No, the curved line you see in the bottom drawing is actually the same no cut buffer. That's the same no cut buffer. Okay. Yeah. That is the tree line. It was clear right to the no-cut buffer. But, but I don't know when there was the, the violation of the, I don't recall, I mean, I remember being involved at the time, yeah. where the no-cut violation was. I'm not sure either. And I, and I don't know why we would have approved a plan with a no-cut provision, and he would have thought he could put the well in then, and now he can't. Well, I don't know. as an explanation, when you submit this plan to DES for approval of a septic system, it has to show the well on there. Now, he may, the designer of this system may very well have been told to put the well there in the process of this submission, and it was approved by our town public works department. It was reviewed before it went to the state. And the state approved it, knowing that the, the well is adequately spaced from the septic system, et cetera, et cetera, it meets all those guidelines so what we're really talking about is only as it relates to our town ordinance not to the fact that there's <coughs> anything wrong with this sector system or the well location from I, the state standpoint I understand that okay Carl just for clarification <clears throat> sort of confused here because it says proposed artesian well and then it says as built location we're talking about a well that is existing on site right there it is an existing well now they have okay. drilled it. So that is where it's located. In so they've, ar they've already put it in. They've, they've already put it in. Yep. Oh. They're, they're coming to us after the fact for this. That should have been on the information provided, in my opinion, because this is a, a history with this development. Um, correct. This is an amended plan. If you look at the, 
the uh, description in the middle of the bottom of the page, it tells you it was amended in January 8, 2011 to reflect the actual location of the house, the location of the septic in the well. So it has nothing to do with the no-cut zone, and no one has checked the no-cut zone. It has to do with the fact that the builder put a well in right. without where it wasn't approved to be, and somehow it has come up, and now he's back in front of us. Does anybody have so? And that's why it's amended with a stamp from the state on the right side, is because they changed the well location. You have to go in and get an amended approval from the state when and you move the well location. And that was just done last week? Three, four. Yeah. Three, four. He had to certify the foundation, and when he certified the foundation, they show the well location, and that's how it's We come. found out about it. Yes. So we so found wants, it. Yes, for when he was coming in to get his certificate of occupancy. Tim. And since that well radius is onto the slope easement area, maybe we should have them execute a uh, salt protection waiver from the town that the town's salting of the roads will not uh, have we will not be responsible for any effect on that well as well. We've executed those in the past when we've allowed the radius to go into the town's right of way. Yeah, but it's not in the right of way. Well, it's in the it's in the drainage easement, which theoretically it. water could run in there someday, and if it's got salt in it, then it'll theoretically could go into the well. The easement, Megan I just said it wasn't in the drainage easement. It's just in the slope easement, so we need but some if, clarification. But, but this is an area where they may put drainage in if, if they extend the road, if I the heard Meg correctly. Right there, correct. it's the drainage Did I hear you correctly? Uh, um, it's over a slope drainage and drainage easement. It's all one thing. It's written as one thing. It's not separated out. What I'm saying is it's in a portion that is truly a slope easement, not a drainage easement. But as you're saying, if the road is ever connected, it's all one generic slope and drainage easement. There's no way to say we may never have drainage that gets closer. I agree that there should be the well radius, the well liability release, and that's what this is all about. Right. What happened, like Brian said, is however it works over at building, they came to get their certified foundation plan, the well was on it, Somebody noticed, maybe over at Town Hall, that the location. well over, like maybe moved from where it was originally proposed. Someone noticed it was in the easement. They called me. We looked at it, but the well was already installed, and and this happens a lot. There's, I don't think there's a process in our town that we go out and check a well location before it's put in. It's it's an. That, that, that's true. So we don't, so this ha has happened, you know, on more than one occasion. Um, and in this instance, it just happens to cover uh, cross over um, just a little corner of that easement. So, um, but, but it is a slope and a drainage easement. It's a yes. combined. It's yep. not one or the other, one and another. Okay. It's all, both of them. So it is slope and drainage. Carlos. Well, we probably ought to look at that issue because it's not uncommon at all for well locations to move uh, once the sites go to development and construction. That's not unusual at all. Right. I know it is. Yeah. So. I mean, if, we, if we're going to be faced with this now time again, we ought to come up with a process or procedure or policy to deal with it. Okay. That doesn't lead us to a resolution here. Um, your thoughts on a resolution, Carlos? Any? Um, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's a protective well radius. And as long as there's no, no activities going on within the protective well radius, that's going to have the potential to impact the water quality in the well, I don't have a problem with letting it go forward. Would you, um, since it does extend into the drainage and slope easement, do we want a waiver for um, contamination, salt contamination, or whatever, just to cover the base? I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Okay. So we're looking at, if we were going to grant this waiver, and there's obviously three points of discussion, as I, s I can find my notes here. It's not much of an encroachment, but it is an encroachment. I don't know if you say a salt protection waiver, a, a, a well warranty liability waiver, and a DES well radii waiver, um, and allow the town planner, i.e. Brian and Megan, to review the documentation is that what we're looking at? Yeah. Someone care to make so that? So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. All right. Say so it. who? Okay. Who's going to give me a second on that? 
been moved by Carlos. Is there a second I'll to second. that? Second. Uh, we got a second from Steve Dutton. All right. Any discussion on that motion? Gotcha. What are the requirements for a waiver of our ordinance? Presentation by the applicant as to the reasons why would be one of them. But go ahead, Tim. Uh, yes. In granting this waiver, do we need to put in the record that we consider this a non-material change to the plan? Yes. So would you add that to the motion, Carlos? Yes, I will. Do you amend it as Tim? Yes. Any discussion on the motion going around the table? Phil? No. Steve? None. Carl? No. Tim? I'm good with it. Carlos? Set. Barbara? I said my piece, you've just set some more precedents. And I understand that there's a procedure, but this is an after the fact issue that this builder is well aware of what the requirements are. And I understand it's not material, so. But what is the alternative? When someone comes in and says that I'm not doing it because of the no-cut buffer, I would have liked there to have at least been some verification that that okay. can at least on its face be a reason because, quite honestly, we've just moved this well radius because the applicant wanted to. Okay. Any other comments? We have a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Move the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Chair votes no also. <coughs> Motion carries. Brian, it's in your park. Now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, back to the regular order of business. Under old business, map 38, lot 36. I'm not going to read it all because I read it all before. <laughs> uh, continued from January 27, 2011. Brian. Mr. Chair, uh, this project is uh, the Granite State Christadelphian Church. It's located at 18 North Mass Street. Uh, the current owner is United Methodist Church, and they're working with the owner to um, have this once this site plan is approved, then they'll go ahead with their finalization of their sale of the property. Uh, basically, the applicant is requesting to reinstate the religious uh, assembly from what has been used as a vestry shop for a number of years. Um, they were before the planning board uh, on January 27th and then also on February 23rd. The board did grant some waivers um, for surface water conservation district delineations, uh, for drainage study, for traffic study, and also for parking requirements. And those were for acceptance purposes only. So uh, tonight, one of the things that is on your um, recommendation list is to grant those for the, the actual approval, not for just acceptance, but for the, for the approval of the, uh, the site plan. Uh, there's there's no variances that are required for this. Um, however, there are two conditional use permits required. Um, one is for the use to be in the village commercial district, church use to be allowed in the village commercial district um, is um, allowed by conditional use permit. Uh, the other conditional use permit would be in regards to the parking requirement. Um, the, the zoning ordinance states that the planning board can waive some or all of the parking requirements um, if they do it through a conditional use permit. That, that's the mechanism that um, is used to approve that. So um, the planning board did at a previous meeting state that they would be willing to work with them since the site is somewhat uh, unique and not really conducive to having a lot of parking on site um, and just allowing them to use parking within the, the town that's already there for public parking spots and things like that. Um, 
So those two conditional use permits uh, would, would be needed. Um, the criteria is listed. Uh, the applicant did provide a letter addressing the criteria for the conditional use permit. Um, and then, uh, again, as I stated, we'll need to do those formal waivers for the approval. Um, and there's uh, criteria listed also for granting a waiver um, in your report. I've listed some conditions of approval in your report. Uh, one of those I need to remove is condition number five at the end. Um, we did receive a note from the water precinct that they've reviewed and verified the location of their water main on their plan. We just wanted to double check that. Megan had, had asked about getting that information. So they did send me a memo stating that um, their location of their water main is in the correct place. So um, we can remove that condition. And then also bef before the meeting I discussed with Megan one other issue um, that we would like to add as a condition for the site plan. And that is that snow shall not be stored in the drainage easement area behind the building. Um, and that's due to a uh, recent issue that the DPW has um, come across where snow was piled into a, into a drainage area and caused an ice dam and some drainage problems. So um, we just want to make that a condition of approval that no snow would be st stored in the uh, drainage easement area. Now that wasn't on this site though, right? That was not on this site, no. Okay. That was on a different site. We just are trying to make sure that other sites don't cause similar problems. And uh, you've got the site plan in front of you, which shows a couple of uh, handicap spots that they've designed um, in order to uh, meet their handicap requirements at least. The rest of their parking would be, as I stated, off-site. So. Uh, that's basically it from me. I'll turn the time back to the chair. Thank you, Brian. Is there a representative here for the applicant to provide a presentation? Mike, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad I don't have a, a well on site. Oh, I'm going to have to talk about it. Um, I don't believe you were here at last uh, last meeting, Mr. Chairman. Um, this this slot was created back in 1888. Um, church was built in 1889, and it's been in uh, continuous ownership. Um, the Methodist Episcopal Society ever since. Clearly, with the uh, all the things going on on site, the 20-foot drainage easement for the first half drainage swale, um, the constraints of the ledge and the grades, uh, there's only one place to put the, the handicapped parking. In it's all in the flood zone. As, as we explained last time, the ordinance says that you, you can't place any fill and create a situation where you're going to have to uh, create compensatory storage or, or, or block the flow of the flood zone. The way the, the parking lot's designed, uh, we're going <coughs> to remove material. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually going to be no fill uh, on, the re on this reconfigured plan. Uh, there's no fill. The lower corner of the parking lot, the westerly edge, is at grade. Comes easterly at uh, just under 1% grade. So we're going to actually create uh, like a 5 to 1 increase in the storage capacity to what was there before in the, in the flood stage. We've uh, addressed Megan's concerns and Brian's concerns and address those. The only item that I know now is the uh, snow storage, not in the 20-foot uh, 
on drainage issues for the town. Of course, we can we can add a note in that in that area and in, in, in the notes to satisfy the board's requirements. And we do need a conditional use permit for the use. And we do need a conditional use permit for off-site parking. We did discuss that, albeit in a brief manner. The last hearing, we've uh, provided a written response to the board for, for that both of those conditional use permits. We feel that um, we've adequately addressed those. I don't know if you would like me to read the entire document or if you've had a chance to read it yourself. Um, I have. Whatever the board's pleasure is. Okay. You can go from there. Well, members of the board, do you have any questions of the applicant's representative? Seeing that, I'll open the public hearing. Do any members of the public wish to speak in reference to this application? You'll get your shot, Megan. <laughs> I see nobody. Uh, Megan. I just had um, a couple quick questions. I had sent an um, email last Friday with just three minor things, one of which was taking care of the verifying Village Water Precinct, but two three things to be labeled. I just didn't know if that got taken care of because I don't have a new water plan. Very minor, but. Yeah, um, I, I can answer that. Actually, um, Mike Dahlberg came in that same day after the comments had been provided and, and gave us a new plan and those things had been addressed. The other two had been addressed on there. Okay. And then he just um, let me know that he'd get with uh, Lee Minnick from the water precinct and, and get that note, which he did to me on Monday, so. So is that water line labeled on the plan? On the on is the, it a, on is the it a latest main, a six inch main through yes. okay. on the latest plan all that has been labeled sorry, yeah thanks. nope sorry I should have okay. sent that information to you so members of the board any other questions to the applicant last chance for members of the public any members of the public wishing to speak in reference to this application and then I'll close the public hearing members of the board. I think we have to take action on this tonight. Excuse me? I think we should take action on this tonight, right now. I'm prepared to make a motion. Okay. Like. Um, I'd like. I'd like to make a motion to grant the two conditional use permits. Uh, one relative to section 4.C.13 and 4.2, 4.D.12. Uh, with a finding that specific circumstances relative to the site plan or conditions of land and such site plan indicate that the waiver will properly carry out the spirit and intent of the regulations and grant conditional use permit in accordance with section 3.11 finding that's compatible with surrounding neighborhood and finding the following section 15.4.1 conditional use permit provisions which are and they're whoops they're labeled a through e but a is labeled, labeled twice so it looks like it's going to need to be a through f under item five, and then site uh, approve let's, the site let's plan. Let's take the conditional use permit okay, sure. by themselves. Okay. Do, is there a second to Carlos's motion on the two conditional use permits? I'll second Carlos's motion. Seconded by Tim. Any discussion on those two motions, or that one motion, reference granting the use conditional use permits? Seeing no comments, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries unanimously. I'll now make a motion to approve the site plan, subject to the conditions as found in the staff <coughs> recommendations, A1 through 5, with an additional finding 6, that not, there shall be no snow storage in the drainage easement. We're deleting number 5, five right? Stated. Yes. Yes. Okay, yep, so we've still got 5. In. We're deleting 5 and replacing 5. So it would be 1 through 4 plus snow. Carl. Just point of clarification, do, are we going to have, there's a waiver also requested. Yeah, there's two waivers. Two waivers, too, right? We, we have four to cover. Okay. Oops, I thought, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> sorry, I just wanted to. Yeah, we'll get to those. Okay. <coughs> Why don't we take those first then? Yeah. Motion to grant the waivers. Yeah, yeah motion to grant the two waivers that were requested. <coughs> there's 4C13 there's and 4D12. I thought you mentioned those. Yeah, I think I did, didn't I? Yes, you I did. You included those as yeah. the special. As part of the conditional use permit. As part of the conditional use yeah. permit. Yep. Yeah. So I think we covered it. 
So I think those are already covered. So back to the original <coughs> motion made by Carlos. For site plan approval. Seconded by Tim on the site plan approval. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing then, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Project has been approved. Next item under old business, map 14, lot 9. Subdivision plan review hearing for proposed three lot subdivision, creating two new lots. Lynn Paul, owner, St. Anselm's Drive Zone Residential 2, and is continued from January 27th. 2011. Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is uh, again a project that uh, came before you previously. It's the Lynn Paul subdivision for three lots. It's located on Holly Street and it also abuts St. Anselm Drive. Um, Mike Dahlberg is also the applicant on this, so uh, he gets to do two in a row. Um, Basically, this subdivision had come before the board previously and uh, had fallen off the, off the radar screen for a while, and now it's, it's back before you. Um, they're basically making no changes to the design other than some recent recommended changes to driveway access location and uh, turnaround location. Um, for fire department, uh, emergency <coughs> fire department turnaround. Uh, the previous location for the turnarounds was on the east side of the lot and the driveway was at the west end. Now that those have switched um, due to, uh, because of a recommendation from Megan that uh, it, it's better to have the snow plowed um, into those areas or down towards the end so it's not going to block the driveways for the, the homeowners that are going to be living there because uh, it tends to pile up when they plow the end of the street like that. Um, <coughs> so <coughs> that's been all um, drawn and shown on the site plan. There uh, are, we're recommending approval of the site plan, of uh, the subdivision plan tonight uh, subject to it shows on there 10 conditions, but I have two number eights. I, I seem to have a problem with <laughs> duplication tonight. Um, two A's and two eights. Um, but anyway, so that's actually one through 11. And then also, uh, also just before the meeting, discussing with Megan, she, uh, we noticed that we need to add a condition on this for bond uh, for a bond to be submitted for the public improvements for the for the roadway and and uh, just that uh, that small extension of the roadway, so as a condition subsequent, we would add that they need to submit a bond for public improvements. And Megan looks like she's wants to add something very quickly. I just noticed you actually do have that. It's um, condition A six, uh, no A seven. Um, you actually have completion of infrastructure oh. or acceptable security, so it's there. Okay. But I think conditions six <coughs> and seven would become conditions subsequent because typically they don't do the improvements or the bond until after they have their signed plan or the escrow account. Okay. So, so we don't need to add one, but I would take six and seven and move them down to conditions subsequent. I'd like to ask a question, Megan. Is there any construction cost limit before you accept a bond? If I had a twenty thousand dollar project, do I still have to do a bond, or is there some something, some cost limit that sets off the bond? I want to say it's twenty five. Twenty five thousand? Yeah, we just looked at this the other day. I think twenty five. So anything under that normally would not require posting yeah, a bond it's or security. State, state law. Because Carl and I were just looking at that the other day. Twenty five is the number that's in my head. Okay. Couldn't tell you what the RSA is. So the necessity of the bond might very well depend upon your uh, cost analysis of this project. So if there's less than that, then they won't have it. Okay. Stairs. All right. So it's up to you. Okay. Members of the board. <coughs> I 
we will like to hear from the applicant though. I was not here at the meeting when it was accepted as complete. Is there a representative here of the applicant wishing to speak? Reference this project. Hi, Mike. Um, basically, we just want to extend Holly Street 120, 130 feet. Same grade, 5% transition, 3% of the turnaround. Keep flat, no need to flat the turnaround. Um, extend the sewer, service both, both houses, extend the water. Um, Mr. Devanza had a question about the status of the water line. I do have correspondence from Manchester Water Works. Uh, telling us that we'll have to apply for a water line extension, but it's, they do have custody of the line and it's not driving, so um, I could get that email to Brian, but it's just an email. We, we are going to make a formal application for that extension. Um, we have submitted uh, these plans to the Sewer Commission. Have submitted these plans to the sewer commission for their approval. Um, Megan's gone through the engineering review. Um, I believe Derek's gone through his review. We're not asking for any waivers, there will be any variances or special exceptions. Um, the houses and the size of the lots will be consistent with those in the neighborhood. Um, no traffic issues have to put on at the end. <coughs> uh, just for the driveways. And no wells. Okay. Members of the board. <clears throat> Just a point of clarification again. Uh, with regards to the proposed drainage easement, is it not an easement and it's just going to be a pond that is going to be maintained by the homeowner? Is that what's proposed here? I read in the notes. That's that's what the condition number eight states. Um, right currently on the plan, it shows a note that says proposed drainage easement. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what the condition would basically require is to remove that note and to add a note saying that that drainage retention detention pond would be maintained by that property owner um, instead of by the town. Okay, so then that would lead to my next question, which is a drainage maintenance agreement that would be within the deed for that lot itself. Is it, it, it wouldn't have anything to do with the town maintaining it, correct? No. It would just be the homeowner. And it will be noted on the, the recorded plan as well as possibly the engineering plan. I just as on a note, like note number eight in the engineering plan, um, just add it, saying that it was going to be maintained by the homeowner. Yeah, that'll show up on the plan, or we'll have them record the actual notice of decision with all these conditions. Mm -hmm. So that'll be something that's recorded along with the plan somehow. Okay. It's actually required by state statute. And I know that generally the engineering plans don't get recorded, but they're in, in the, at the town for a town record. So if it's on the plan, just mention it. Oh, you're saying on the engineering plans, on the engineering plans not on the subdivision well. plan? Well, on the subdivision plan as well. Okay. Um, that's what I was requesting. We, that's, that's something easy. We only to. got the PDF. I'm sorry, Brian. I didn't mean to step on your toes. Um, we only got the PDF of these plans in my office today. Okay. Um, and frankly, um, with the ice in my driveway, I didn't have a chance to get everything ready tonight the way I wanted to. So I haven't been able to match the plans, but we will certainly add that from the surveyor's point of view. That note should be on the solution plan, and it also should be in the document that right. it came to the property. That way, it's a belt and suspenders approach. No one, no one's coming back to the town. Right. Um, I have no problem with that. Tim, but well, Mike, the um, this detention pond. There's no notations or any diagrams or anything that tells what it is. Is is this? That's on these plans. It's oh, on the engineering plans. Sorry. My fault. My fault. Okay. There's any plans there. I didn't catch that. Sorry. Okay. I apologize. Basically, it's a, a one one foot deep swale. We have a 36 inch water table. And, uh, excuse me, a one a, a one foot deep detention basin above the water table. Over excavate. Put in a foot of gravel. Put in the loam seed. Basically, uh, you've created a conduit. 
for the uh, the minimal amount of drainage to just leach into the ground. Is it surface water from the road that's going there, Mike, or from the surrounding property? It's basically f the 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 front half of the house, the driveway, and that small section of the road. Okay. We've um, contained all that we can. It's it, it's a it's a fraction of the CFS that's going to be running down the road. Okay. Thank you. Any other members of the board? Seeing that, I'll open a public hearing. Anybody wishing to speak and reference this application? I'll leave it open for a couple of minutes. Megan, do you have any other comments? No, I do not. Members of the board? Seeing if it's been required, open it back up to the public. Anybody wishing to speak and reference this application? And we'll close the public hearing. Members of the board? How are we going to assure that the tension pond stays there and doesn't become a parking spot for an RV <clears throat> or something in the future? Is it going to be through some sort of a deed? Megan. There will be a drainage maintenance agreement, which should be a recorded document, which is what we've been talking about, which will be noted on both plans. Okay. The deed should reference the drainage maintenance agreement, okay. which is a separate recorded document. Yep. And in that, it allows the town to step in, if necessary, to do something and back charge the property owner. Okay. That's item number five on the list. Just a Tom Trainage. Yeah, yeah. Phil. Yeah. yeah, and I think the benefit of that too is if the property is sold, the new purchaser, when they look at the the deed, that'll be noted on there, and when it goes through the mortgage <coughs> process, everybody should be able to see that. Yes. Absolutely. It's going to be on the plan. It'll be in the deed. It'll also be a separate document. The maintenance agreement. So. Steve? Phil? No, I'm all set. Carl? I'm all set. Jim? I'll make a motion if we're ready. Um, let me get to Carlos and I'm Barbara. all set. Barbara? I'm all set. Tim? I'd like to make a motion to approve this subdivision plan uh, with the conditions precedent 1 through 5 and 8 and condition subsequent six, seven, the other eight, nine, and 10. Um, Second. Add, add, <laughs> add, a, add a bond for public improvements? Is that that's in, in there? That's already in there. It's in, okay. it's in seven. All right. And I'll second that. Okay. Seconded by the bill. No. Any other additions to this motion for consideration? Just an editorial note. Yes. Under, under five, it has A, C, and D. Just correct it to A, B, and C. Okay. A, C, and D. Um, <laughs> I do that the way it is. <laughs> are, we are we covered on our water and sewer extensions and approvals in these conditions? Yeah, number eight is Gosstown Sewer Commission, and number nine is Manchester Water Works right. approval. Yes. Okay. And the state, state, subdivision. state subdivision approval as well is in there, number 10. Okay. No other conditions we want to make? Add to this list. Any um, other? Any? Yes. Make sure that the number eight talks about the detention pond maintenance. That um, be sure it includes a maintenance agreement, which is not in writing on number eight. It's you want to add? Five, That's five, on number it's five. On five. Oh, it's on it's five. In, then? It's in five. five. Right. Yep. It's mixed up here. Yes. Okay. C. That's why I'm asking the questions. Three letters to B. Okay. Then I'm. My motion stands. Motion by Tim, seconded by Phil. Any further discussion? Call the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously for approval. Thank you, Mike. You're highly efficient. I don't know about that. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> Next item on our agenda under old business. Plan. Map 3, Lot 32A, time extension request hearing to request more time to build the approved Goffstown Harvest Christian Church, Cody Avenue, Daniel Plummer Road, St. Anselm's Drive, and Route 114, zoned industrial. And it was continued from February 10th, 2011. 
Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this uh, item has been before us monthly since uh, it came in back in November. Um, I know we're all very familiar with uh, what what's on the agenda. Um, basically, the only change really that we've seen is uh, the ZBA did finally get a uh, decision on their variance requests, and uh, those were both approved by the ZBA. So uh, variances were granted for steeple height as well as for the church to be in the industrial zone. Um, the church asked for a time extension, and previously the planning board had looked at this and denied it based on the fact that the variances were not in effect. Um, and then subsequently after that, um, they you, you took back the decision basically and um, allowed them to at least pursue getting the variances and um, and and basically now we're to the point of they have gotten the variances and the planning board um, <coughs> just needs to decide whether or not to grant the time extension request um, and I think I stated it last time but uh, I believe the recommendation would be appropriate to give them one year from when we act on this so um, this w that would give them a year extension from today so the the time extension will be given through March 10th of 2012 um, and that's basically the summation in short uh, I'll answer any questions if you have or else I'll turn the time back over to the chair Thank you, Brian. How many members of the board have anything to add to this before I open it up for public hearing? Tim. Uh, Brian, did, did the Zoning Board of Appeals place any new conditions on the application? Yes, they did. The conditions of approval, and actually I, list, I copied your, in your packet, I copied the notice of decision from the ZBA. Uh, <coughs> the condition, there was one condition for each variance, and uh, the condition for allowing the church in the industrial district was that there be no outside services at this location. Uh, and the condition for the height variance on the steeple was that the steeple is to be used solely as an architectural element and cannot have communication abilities, for example, but not limited to telecommunication facilities. Those were both conditions that were associated with the old variances that they that the church had gotten. So uh, they had make, made the recommendation to continue having those as conditions for these new variances that the, that the church just, just received. Thank you, Brian. Any other members of the board? <coughs> uh, this public hearing is still open. It's still open. And that uh, I will ask the applicant if there's any new information they wish to present this evening in reference to this request for a time extension. Okay. I have no new information to present other than, as Mr. Rose indicated, the variances that we have been applying uh, for to the ZBA have been granted, and they've been granted with identical conditions to the conditions which had been previously granted uh, back in 2008. So if the, any members of the board have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Just for the record, he needs to identify himself for the record. Michael Tierney for Gothstown Harvest Christian Church. Thank you, Mr. Tierney. Members of the board, have any questions of the applicant? Seeing none, are there any members of the public who wish to speak and reference this application for a time extension? Last call. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Members of the board, um, this has been a I only brought part of my file. It's been a long and arduous journey. 
but it's a pretty simple matter. And they're here for a request for an extension on their approval. So I would limit my discussion to that. Tim. Brian, have any of our regulations changed that are going to affect this decision tonight? That affect the plan as previously approved? Yes. As, as previously approved, I'm not sure if uh, at the time the new drainage rules were already in place. I believe they, they've been in place for a couple of years, isn't, isn't that correct? Again. The new DES ones, no, are fairly new within the last um, yeah, year. Year, year, okay. year plus. Okay. Well, those would be probably different r rules and regulations. I'm not sure how th that might affect this site plan, if at all. Um, but to my knowledge, that's the only thing that would be different that's changed in, in the... I think we accepted the site plan regs. before those AOT rules changed. I know we did. Megan, do you have any concerns with the drainage that was approved back in 2009? Actually, that's when the plan was signed. Was it? We voted on it in 2008. Has there been any substantial changes that you're aware of that you think will impact <coughs> the drainage systems on this property? The new AOT rules could change some of the requirements because. Uh, the AOT is looking for infiltration now, and I don't believe that system had any infiltration. So it's possible that the drainage system would not meet the new AOT rules. Um, you want to go? Yep. Go ahead. So can just Carlos. Well, does it need AOT approval? Is it over 100,000 square feet? The applicant actually has a current AOT permit. Um, they no, still in force? Still in force. It's okay. val it's valid until 2014, I believe. Okay. I brought the. Okay. I, I actually right. checked into that, and uh, I checked into their sewer permit as well. Um, they both of those are current and valid. Um, okay. For septic, septic. You mean on septic? Septic, septic approval. I'm either. sorry, septic. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. So basically, all those approvals that were. I call it conditions subsequent are still in force, which means they do not have to go back for review and reconsideration at those state agencies. So Correct. Okay. it's really a non issue. Thank you. Any other members of the board? Seeing none, I don't, uh, no issues have been brought forward. Um, Need a uh, motion from the floor. Tim. I'm making a motion to um, approve the time extension based on the new information that the applicant has obtained, the new variances, and for the use to be allowed in the industrial district and for the steeple height. I will add that I'd like to make sure that the two conditions set forth by the Zoning Board of Appeals are included in this approval. Do you want to just add the entire notice of decision? Yeah, in make it one. If, if, if there is an independent notice of decision, I think his point is, is that people often look just at the Planning Board approval, so he wants right. them right as part of the same page. Is that a fair? Yes, I wanted to make, because it does speak to the the uh, two variances, I want to make sure the conditions are included in the uh, planning, board planning board's decision. I, in its entirety? Just, well, the or two just conditions. The fact just two conditions. conditions. Yeah. Two, each, each one of the okay. variances has a condition okay. attached to it, and I want them all to be included in the, in the motion. Okay, so added to that motion is condition number one, with there's no outside services at this location. Condition two is the steeple is to be used solely as an architectural element, not have communications abilities, for example, but not limited to telecommunication facilities. And finally, that the uh, the uh, time extension will begin today, March 10th, 2011, and will continue to March 10th, 2012. Right, second the motion. I'll second. Seconded by Steve Dutton. Any discussion on that motion? 
Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Our next item on our agenda this evening under old business is map 38 lot 101 site plan review hearing for proposed mixed use office and two apartments <coughs> in the existing structure 12 high street llc owner located on high street zone village commercial district and it was continued from february 24 2011 it's tentatively been scheduled for March 24th, but the uh, submitted plans in time to be heard this evening. Yes, Carl. I need to recuse myself. So I'm just gonna... Okay. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, at the last planning board meeting, we had uh, made a decision regarding this. Uh, Prior to knowing whether or not the March 24th meeting was actually a go, uh, we had decided to push this to today's meeting in order to uh, not delay it for the extra month. Now that we know that this uh, that we are going to have a March 24th meeting, um, one my recommendation is going to be that we uh, continue this to the 24th and allow us uh, a little bit additional time to to work everything out um, however um, the applicant is here and the owner is here and I would like to have a little bit of discussion on the project and get a, um, a little bit of more clarification from the board as to what uh, they would like to see on this um, basically they've submitted the site plan um, you've got it in front of you uh, it shows several parking spaces, and uh, I'd like to try to get that uh, ironed out as to what the board would like to see. Um, and with that, um, possibly have the board grant a, a waiver for a couple of parking spaces uh, on the requirement. The current layout has six spaces shown as on-street parking spaces. Staff would prefer that those spaces not be shown as on-street, uh, um, as delineated parking stalls. Um, we recognize that parking is allowed on the street there. Um, however, shown on an approved site plan, um, we just don't want that to interfere with the roadway as it's currently configured and um, and have have <coughs> excuse me have uh, possible conflicts with cars being parked there and other cars having to veer out of the way because those spaces do actually encroach into a little the bit of the road lane. Sure the travel is. lane so um, we'd prefer to leave them shown at shown as just a street right there and no no stalls um, another qu um, question that we'd like the board to uh, answer is uh, whether or not they would allow for only seven instead of nine required parking stalls. Uh, previously, we had thought that the requirement was only six, but in looking at it closer with the square footages and the requirements in the zoning ordinance, it was determined that they would need nine parking spaces. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, five of those spaces would be required for the office space, which is 1,500 uh, square feet on the top floor of the building at one space per 300 square f feet. That, that equals five spaces. Um, the other four would be required for the two dwelling units, two, per, two uh, spaces per dwelling unit. And... Uh, staff's feeling is that uh, with the office space uh, they may not need five spaces especially with the type of office that this is um, planned as and the other um, factor in that is that 
uh, with residential and office combined, uh, the residents would be most likely leaving this. Thank you. Residents would most likely be leaving the site during the day, and the office people would be coming to the site uh, during the day. And so there may be some overlap with uh, parking use. And so uh, we felt it appropriate to uh, reduce the required amount um, to, s to seven, um, f allowing for three spaces to be sort of um, floating spaces for whether or not office people are there and residents. And then once residents would leave their homes, then you know there would be extra spaces for any additional spaces needed. So uh, the 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 thought that I had was that um, there's there's currently seven spaces shown on here. However, uh, spaces two and three encroach into the uh, driveway easement area, the access easement, and we'd like to keep that access easement free and clear. So we'd like them to remove those spaces and show uh, and push those to the rear where it says future spaces eight and nine as needed, um, and actually add one additional space back there. So there would be actually six spaces in the rear, and then one space actually. They could add only two spaces, keep one in the existing garage in the rear, and then one in the existing garage that's within the house area. Um, so that's, that's kind of the concept that I'm trying to um, get them to move with. Um, and we wanted to get the board's approval um, before they go forward and redraw the site plan again. and, and um, take on additional money to do that right. so um, I'll, I'll turn it back to the board and try to get some guidance for the applicant and then once once we get that then we can hopefully continue this to the 24th which is in two weeks and uh, have a site plan that's ready for uh, approval members of the board Phil um, one thing that we want to make sure is that there is no, or uh, perhaps a condition, and I don't know if it was on there, uh, that we, uh, w with the with the the parking um, being as tight as it is, and there's possible changes that might happen because we're not sure of, of the overlaps, um, that we don't have uh, <coughs> parking in the uh, new parking area for the library. Okay, now, do we have copies of the actual easement between the town and the landowner? Uh, to determine what their rights are, their collective rights are? Uh, Mr. Chair, we did not copy that to you in your packets. However, I have it right here in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> then I will let you review it to see if, in fact, they're allowed to have parking in those easements or whether it's just for access and driveways. If it allows parking, I'd she be hard-pressed to say that they can't use it for parking. Oh, Mr. Chair, um, the, the, the thought that I had at least, and, and I'll review this and, and verify, but the thought that I had was uh, it's important to um, at least not show it as a parking stall. To allow it um, is one thing, but to have it shown on an approved site plan is another because then once a driveway does want to go in there, um, there's going to be potential conflicts, and they're going to come and say, well, this is an approved site plan. I have approved parking stalls right here, and you're not going to tell me I can't do this. So the, Understood. The, the, the thing that I would say is in the meantime, especially while it's still just a private drive, allow them to park wherever they want inside their driveway. Fine. And then once it becomes an easement for you know public access and use um, at, with two-way driving through it and everything then you know you 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 allow for um, restrictions on 
maybe parking with on that driveway area. Okay. Steve? No, that makes sense to me. I'm okay with it. Tim? So to, just to review, Brian, you're, the areas that are marked future spaces 8 and 9, are you saying those should be included right now and not be marked future spaces? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And that spaces number 2 and 3 would go would away. Be, would go away. Mm -hmm. um, 8 and 9, w I also made a note in the staff report that handicapped spaces were not going to be required due to the fact that the building code um, allows it for... Um, It basically doesn't require it unless it's uh, going to be a full change of use, which this is only a partial change of use, and they're not making any changes interior to the building um, that would allow for handicap accessibility within the building. So um, that being said, it, the code didn't count that as a full requirement. Okay. Carlos? I'm all set. Barbara? I'm all set, but I have a question, just because I, I... Please ask. Just want to clarify, this line within the easement to the north indicates the current paved area, right? The solid, the solid line. Is the, the existing driveway is between the new lot line and that existing line. Is that what I'm looking at? Correct. The, the current driveway right. okay. is on their side of the property line. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to. And it's not the dark lines where the split is on the hashing. It's a, another solid line that's just north of that. Okay. You can sort of see where it comes off right. the road and then dry, yeah. and goes It sort up. of gets wider at the back. Oh, yeah. Right. right. And that right. is connected to the parking lot that the town yeah. put in at the present time. Right. Tim, I may be reading this wrong, but it looks to me like the property line is down the center of the existing driveway. No, it's down the center of the east. Okay. See the tree line? Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. Yeah, the I driveway agree. goes like this. It's really important sure. also to know that the easement is 35 feet wide, whereas the driveway requirement for two-way in and out is 24 Kathy. feet wide. Kathy. Oh. Okay, um, Mr. Chair. Yes. And also, in regard to Brian, Brian's request about reducing number of spaces, we did that when we approved the YMCA, but we review, we re, we uh, remain able to right review word. it in the future. Yeah, we, we're, we're awesome. able to review it if it becomes a problem in the future, and we can require future additional parking at, at a later date. Revisit, yeah. The dark line in the middle of the driveway is actually the property setback line. Okay. Yeah. It's just at a heavier line width than the others. Right. It just happened to be where they put it existing happens to be driveway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I think Brian's recommendations make sense. Okay. Then uh, I'll open up for the applicant's uh, presentation. Is there somebody here wishing to speak for the applicant? Kathy? Yes. My name is Catherine Parscaza. I'm a registered architect. Um, I'm... Um, representing Mr. Seltzer, who's the owner, Dean Seltzer. Um, he would like to put the business on the second floor of the existing two-family dwelling, and the parking uh, Mr. Rose covered very adequately. Um, right now, there was a, a question related to the two parking spaces, and, and we're amenable to putting the parking in the back. Um, currently, he does park his vehicles right there, and there is, is clearance to get through. Um, so he felt that it, it would be, um, at this point, convenient to have him his, maintain his um, possibility of parking his car in front of his own garage um, and it, without having the library use that thoroughfare as the main driveway presently. Um, he's not, a man of, he's not uh, disagreeing in putting in the, the future parking in the back and, and doing that. Um, he wants very much to work well with the town and, and with the library and um, maintain uh, that relationship in a positive way. Um, so the parking along the back is, is something that he'd agree to. And as far as the on-street parking, 
um, I was asked to show that on the, on the site plan because it is in the village commercial district and the village commercial district does allow on street parking although we only are required for nine spaces we sh we showed that because during um, pumpkin regatta and other civic activities there are always cars parked along that area so we wanted to show that it, it the present use is um, accommodating for that although he can not anticipate any situation where he would personally ever have to park um, an additional six vehicles on his prop, you know, to come to his property. So we just showed it there so that you could see what uh, is currently used. Can I ask you a question, Megan? Is the geometry in that street a problem in terms of the, uh, the width of the pavement plus the parking? And are we uh, showing parking out there with enough, with a not enough dimensional? requirements for the parking cars on that street I, I thought I heard that referred to I don't think there's enough room if we properly stripe spots the width they're supposed to be out yeah. there's enough of a travel lane left I think when cars are parked there a vehicle using a travel lane will have to go over the yellow line you'd have to restripe the road and the new striping would end up being off the crown the full width curb to curb maybe should be plenty to accommodate it but I think the crown was put in the middle of the road and not shift it over enough to accommodate one-sided parking. Okay. I drive that street every day and there is no way you can park cars there and have a car stay in the travel lane and not cross mm -hmm. over the, the yellow line to get by the park cars. Okay. And I, I don't disagree. Then I, then I would think that we might be hard-pressed to approve anything suggesting that mm -hmm. Brian suggested parking those be removed is, from right. the plan. And, and also okay. for the record, we don't need them. And we don't need I them. Understand. So I just... I understand, Kathy. Um, I'd like to open, uh, excuse me, Barbara. I have a question about um, drainage for the parking spaces because we abut Spring, the infamous Spring Street here. And I forget, I think this came up when we talked about it before. If there's going, to, I, and I think that, as I recall, the owner wanted to do as little disturbance on that back property line to his abutters as possible because he was trying to be a good neighbor. And so that's why he sort of had proposed the parking the way he had. And, uh, you know, there are no, you know, I don't have any elevations here, so I have no idea, but I know that High Street goes up and Spring Street is down. So are there any drainage issues that might arise if those parking spaces get put in the back? Because I think, you know, there's already that space, but we're talking about putting two to the left. And I, and Brian, am I right that you actually wanted three to the left? Uh, I corrected myself. I'm, I'm going back to two because of the num where the number seven is. Because um, you're going to count that as that being as one of the back. Space. So that's my only question back there. I believe that whole area drains very slightly, but drains down into the library um, parcel. You can, I don't know if you can or can't see it, but there are contours on there, and they kind of make a V, and the middle of the V is Oh, all right, okay, they are here. Right now I'm seeing them. The, water. Um, the new drainage that was installed in, in the library um, parking lot area, I believe was just stopped, like leaching catch basins. I don't know if it was tied into the drainage system that's out on High Street. No, it wasn't. Okay. So they're just leaching catch basins right there. Good night, gentlemen. See you in two weeks. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. I am interested to know what the increase is uh, in drainage due to the gravel parking spots. I believe g compacted gravel is also considered impervious, and so we'd have, you know, the applicant would have to evaluate what the increase in off-site flow is because the cross-access easement language refers to a condition on the approved plan that there is only allowed to be a one CFS increase overall from any improvements now throughout the history of the site can be increased by one CFS only <coughs> off-site flow. So what that means is if, say, this, this parking increases the off-site flow by 1.5, let's say, they have to handle that 0.5 on their site. They can't put more than one CFS onto the library parking lot. So it is something we need to look at okay. to make sure whatever the amount is that it's increasing by, we know that number and we make note of that, maybe even an approval condition so that if anything ever changes in the future, we'll remember what it was and what is left for capacity. 
I honestly can't remember when we approved the prior project. I know there was a great concern of drainage um, because it was a wet area and right. occasionally the bank parking lot, TD Bank parking lot was flooded as well as the library's parking lot. There seems to be a low area right there in that corner. So I think we'd still be concerned about that. But call us. Can I get some clarification on the plan, please? On the, those back spaces, um, there's a note that says existing tree line, but the leader points to a radius on the parking spaces. So am I seeing an existing tree line that already exists that goes around those rear spaces? It does. Kathy? Okay, so that leader is not properly shown there. Yeah. Here, I'll so, here's a leader that goes here. That's right. It goes to. It, okay. It, so this is yeah. that that leader's not correct. So this tree line does exist. It does. So the vegetation's really been cleared to it, accommodate it, those spaces. It has been cleared. There's a large tree here, and there's another large tree over here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other members of the board? Because I'm going to open it up to public. Anybody from the public wishing to speak in reference to this application? Mike Waller, a member of the Library Board of Trustees. I understand we've already asked for a continuance. So our board has not had a chance to review these plans. We got them Monday. We meet monthly. Our subcommittee that advises the board again has not had a chance to review these plans. Um, there's a significant change from what we met with the abutter on January 19th and spoke about. Um, however, at that time, we did say to the abutter that parking within the easement would be unacceptable. That easement is a right that we purchased that was active as of the day of recording. It, so it's not when it's being used or when it's not being used. That, that access easement is in place. Um, and right now on the plan that you see in front of you, it shows existing parking spaces two and three. Those parking spaces do not show as existing on the subdivision plan that was recorded. Um, those were not existing spaces because that's a driveway access easement. The easement was, I would say, <laughs> vigorously negotiated with the former owner with uh, insight from the town planner at the time. So the location, size, scope, everything else of that easement was not something that was arbitrarily drawn or drawn so that uh, vehicles can get by parked vehicles or anything else. Um, and I guess, you know, my personal comment would be that, you know, the abutter, the architect, and the board don't have the right to give away the rights that the library purchased or the town purchased as of that date. Um, in my mind, that would be like me parking my motorcycle on your back porch and saying you tend to use the front porch. <laughs> your back porch is your own for your own use. We purchased that for a specific use. I want to make sure that use is maintained. Do you have a question? Barbara, question. Is your subcommittee and board meeting before the 24th? Yes. Okay. So we would just request that our full comments be given at that point. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other members of the public wishing to speak in reference to this application? Good evening. My name is Steve Seltzer, and I own the property at 12 High Street, and I understand that you sit down. there are... Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get to pick where. <laughs> okay. Relax. Yeah, no, I understand that um, when I purchase the property that there is a cross easement that is in place that is for the benefit of uh, creating a common driveway that may happen at some time in the future. And I am coming into this sort of as a, as a newcomer to the area, so I'm not familiar with the, the history that surrounded um, what uh, Mr. Lawler was talking about. But what I can tell you is that um, we very much want to comply. And I can't tell you what that means, but whatever is involved in the easement, whatever the legal verbiage is in the, in the easement, um, you know, we fully intend to comply with that. And, and be a good neighbor and take care of whatever issues come up. So that shouldn't be a concern at all as, as things come along. Uh, we'll also review the drainage um, issue that you brought up in terms of not having 
water going down on Spring Street. I know that's a concern. Um, I also know that somewhere within the easement there is verbiage about drainage and responsibility of the parties for providing whatever drainage is there. So what um, I would hope to do before the meeting on the 24th is look at the entire picture to look at the cross easement as it exists between the library property and 12 High Street to look at the site plan that we'll be presenting you and then to look at whatever site plan and other information is available from the library relative to drainage pavement easements and anything else because what we're looking at really is is the whole picture of the contiguous properties um, and I think that that would probably be of concern to the board, uh, board as well so that we can have that uh, that information okay. question Mr. yes so Carlos. does March 24th give you adequate time to address the issues that we've heard tonight so we can come back on the 24th with a plan with ready to drainage information you can do drainage yep. in two weeks we'll see and if we can't yeah, we'll let you know and we'll ask for an extension but we'd like to endeavor to do that question Barbara on the plan Kathy you can probably answer this yeah. I'm just looking at what's in the hatch area mm -hmm. and there's sort of existing landscaping granite walk and this orb does that exist the grant are you looking on the library side of the parcel correct yes all of that exists the stairs the walk the granite walk and what is that orb? It's a tree. Oh, that's the, a tree. It's a, it's a gigantic um, silver maple tree, beautiful silver maple, oh. iconic for the property. Okay. All right. Can I say that? Ellen? Just to help them, we have the previous site plan approval and the previous subdivision approval, and probably there was a drainage study done. Oh, great. Good to know. I Thanks know there was a drainage study <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just to follow up on that comment, but the drainage study was done for a parking lot that wrapped the complete circumference of the building, as I may remember. Correct. Not just for the six spots that are in question here. That's right. There were 19. Yeah, but a lot of the information will be able to use. Mr. Lawler. Um, just our meeting is the, our library board of trustees and our subcommittee meetings are both on the 16th. So for us to have substantive comments for the 24th, we'll need those plans in advance obviously we won't need the drainage couch we can okay trust the, the town engineer but for us to have substantive comment by then we would need it by the 16th next, next wednesday i think we should move this out okay i think so all right any other members of the public have a comment question otherwise thank you mr self members of the board make a motion well um this continues yeah well, we continue, but right. continue the public. But I think we're also looking for some direction. And before we continue it, I want to know if there's anything you want to give the applicant any direction versus much more parking. How much more direction do we need to give them? I think it looks good. He said we liked Brian's recommendations yeah. in regards yeah. to the parking. Get rid of the on street. Get rid of two and three. Yeah. Add two to the back. Yeah. I okay. Pretty well you stated over. it. <laughs> Make sure the okay. drainage is complete. Yeah. Sure. Tim. Um, I would like to suggest that they include a handicap accessible spot as shown on the plan because if anything changes in the building, you'd have the handicap accessible parking done and it only amounts to that little <coughs> patch area that makes it accessible. It might be to your benefit to include a handicap spot now as opposed to have to enlarge the parking lot later for a future use. And, and the layout shows that we do have a loading zone between the two spaces. I, I think it's prudent also to do that. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. In terms of handicapped spaces, yes. review it with the town planner in terms of specific requirements. It's, um, it, it's regulated. And it, 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 below a certain number, you're not required to have handicapped spaces I would, by law. Right. And I would prefer to not, if it's not required and they're not going to do it, I would rather not include it so that if it has to happen, then it complies with whatever needs to happen at the time they do it. And otherwise, you're going to end up with this nebulous... So please, please check and verify that because I'm, I'm sure there's a regulation that may not require you to have handicapped spaces. Well, and, and that's what I already tried to address. I, I did discuss that with the uh, building code 
um, the lithium building inspector and per the code there is not a requirement there the technically the zoning ordinance may require it I I'll I mean, if it requires it, then it requires it, and they right. can do it. But it doesn't require it. I'm check not AD, check them ADA, to do it. Kathy. It. Please. Um, and I'm probably the one who has used more handicapped spaces in the last year than anyone on this board. I'm <gasps> fairly <gasps> sure. Yes. <laughs> With permit. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just going to ask: Did you turn it back in? <laughs> they expired. They're they're gone. All right. Um, so I think you have some direction from the board. Um, if you cannot meet the 16th deadline with the library trustees please be in touch with Brian as quickly as you can um, I'm going to leave this uh, public hearing open and I need, need a motion for continuance to March 24th so moved. motion by Phil is there a second to that motion second seconded by Carlos any discussion on the mo continuance motion seeing that I'll call for a vote all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed Motion carries it to continue to March 24th. And you have a pretty stringent deadline to meet. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is other business. Map 18, lot 60 1. Conceptual hearing on the revised phase 2 and phase 3 of the Abington Square retail development behind Rite Aid, Mass Road. Um, I don't know if it's still owned by St. Angelo College, but zone commercial. We'll reschedule for another meeting. Has anybody got any comments in reference to that? Brian, can you give us some feedback? Mr. Chair, I, I didn't give you a memo in your uh, packet regarding this because they, uh, at kind of the last minute, sent an email to me requesting to uh, have a to not be on this agenda they needed a little more time so I copied that email that they sent to you in your packets mm -hmm. and that's basically the extent of what I have I'm, I don't, I don't want to go into anything right. tonight I, I believe in talking to the TF Moran they have a couple serious people looking at that site for commercial development as we, as we sit here they haven't ironed out all the wrinkles Good. I look forward to having something like that happen again. Okay. Yes. Anybody wishing to? Uh, ooh. Yes. There's just a note in the pack here that uh, you remember the Anna King Trust on uh, Shirley Hill Road. Mm -hmm. They just got an uh, amended and five-year extension on their wetlands permit. AOT, alteration terrain permits. So um, they're trying to make sure they're up to date. And, and I don't know, it doesn't say here, but their extension is through uh, 2016. So we'll see what happens. Any other members of the board wishing to bring forth anything for this evening? Barbara. Question. Yes. In our packet, which I left at home on the kitchen counter, there was a copy of correspondence from the Rick Sawyer Bedford Town Planner. Ooh, I want to talk about that. <laughs> in that De the Bedford Planning Board has now made a determination that the Demulas at 114 and Donald, Donald Street. Street has a regional impact. Yep. I think that's clearly the correct decision, and was, but it's my recollection that that project was already before the Bedford Planning Board. They deemed it did not have a regional impact, and they actually approved a plan for Demulas. So why, do you know why all of a sudden Bedford is taking this up again? Uh, Hannaford it's, sued them. It's a different, it's a different building now. Huh? It's, it's, it's a different, yes. different use. Well, they thing should have been sued. Hannaford sued the town. The EPA approved a variance. That's what the previous approval was. This is now going before a planning. A long time ago, they went and they got approved for a different building that was going to be like a workout club. Yeah, workout yeah. club. Oh, now it's so the variance approval for the supermarket that was for the building that was grossly different from their regulations was a zoning approval, not a planning board approval. Yes, because of the size of the building. 
No, I, I recall because they I put, the Bedford put the one on 101 through the ringer, meeting all the regulations, and oh, this yeah. one sort of came through and what poof was approved. That's why Hannaford sued. The ZBA, this same application went before their zoning board for a variance, and that got approved. Now it's before the planning board. Planning determined it was a regional impact. I don't know what happened with ZBA. Yeah, yeah, Hannaford has sued the town of Bedford over the decision to grant the variance because it, the, the store is twice as big as allowed by the ordinance. When Hannaford was denied the size oh, yeah. of the building, no, on I 101. think, I, yeah, because I'm sort of familiar with what happened in Bedford with the other one, and I there, couldn't there believe. There was some craziness that going on there, and the neighbors, okay. the neighbors really got up in their face on the one on 101 because they wanted to be a neighborhood supermarket. I remember that. Right, and they made the Hannafords jump through all sorts of hoops on that story. Yes. Do you all want right. comments to them? My, my, my question well, was, does anybody want to attend this just to find out what the hell is going on? Excuse when me. is it again? It's next uh, week? The 14th. 14th. How about we send the two new members? <laughs> 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 they took off early. That's, uh, that better not be a rendition of things to come. What day of the week Ryan's is that? Ryan's seen the plan. Maybe what day of the week is that? Well, we told him that he became have a cop? economic development. Yeah. He was here. Yeah. I have a copy Monday. of the plan upstairs. Uh, if, if anybody... Mr. Chairman? Yes. Next Monday. Uh, mm. This re notice of regional impact, I think, is, is a very serious matter for us because traffic leaving Gosstown is <coughs> routinely at that light at that <coughs> intersection for a very long time because of the way the road is constructed down to the 101 114 intersection i would like to have us send an official planning department notice that we would like to see them make significant improvements to that piece of road from the between the two sections of lights possibly widen it to four lanes to accommodate the additional traffic that this supermarket is going to generate mm -hmm. and help to alleviate the problem that already exists at the light at White at White Avenue and all the way back to St. A's. If you go down there in the morning ever, that road you could you can sit in it traffic starts down at White there. Ave. It, it's even worse. Even, yeah, it starts traffic at White is Ave. actually gridlocked at White White, White Avenue Ave. all the way to that light, and then it's single lane all the way to where it intersects 101. And if the the recommendation I believe that they're going with is to add an additional lane for a certain distance to the light. Well, um, I would like to see the Goffstown Planning Board make an official um, remark that we would like to see them increase that piece of road to four lanes to the Donald Street intersection, two in each direction, to accommodate the additional traffic and to, uh, to also alleviate some of the traffic problems that have been created through the growth in the area. And a 78,000 square foot supermarket is certainly going to have a major impact on that intersection. Now they made, when Hannaford's had to do the intersection at 101 and Hardy Road, there was nothing there but a blink light and it was a, it was a dangerous intersection. They made Hannaford's put in travel lanes, passing lanes, a, a, um, intersection improvements including a traffic light and they spent a lot of money on that intersection to make it compliant for the town and I think that we have a right to ask that this, this project improve 114 from that light, four lanes all the way down to 101. And Do we have the right to request a traffic study? I'm sure yeah. the traffic study will be a, a part of it, don't you think, Barbara? We would have access to it? I would oh, think. Yeah, I would so. But I'm I would sure. think that we would like to make a very strong recommendation that this is the type of, of, of traffic well, uh, remediation we might like to see. I just uh, ask a yeah, question. Go ahead, Phil. It. Since both towns are members of Southern New Hampshire Planning, mm -hmm. wouldn't Southern New Hampshire Planning be doing that traffic study? I think they might require an independent traffic study. Well, a lot of times they, I guess the point I'm getting at is if it's just. I guess they've already done one. And, and they very might, well might have. I was just looking yeah. at it in, in, instead of being um, more or less combative on it or, you know, uh, just trying to be a little bit more subjective on, on well, I don't want to be combative. I just want to make sure no, that I, we, I understand. But yeah, but the reality is that Dunkin' Donuts and that gas station went in with no finding of a regional impact, as I recall, and that had a huge regional impact with the place with that light that they've got in there and the turning right, right. So, I mean, I I understand not wanting to be somewhat combative, but we can be assertive and be. I polite. think saying that the the intersections have you know. 
serious issues that this applicant should address between White Ave and Donald Street. I mean, well, I'm, I'm not asking for that, Barbara. I'm well, asking I think you should because White Ave is what has started the problem. Are you talking there are about times the you commute? sit in traffic to White Ave and then you get up to Donald Street and there will be no traffic ahead of you because the turning traffic that they have, the way those lights set coming from New Boston Road and Donald Street has so much time and, and lanes of traffic that they get clear and you're getting blocked up from, mm -hmm. from, the, from the way that signalization is set up at that intersection. And it starts at White Ave when they start to hold up all that through traffic. Well, let's put it this way. If any one of us planning board members were to attend this uh, session, would we attend as, a, as an official of the Gostown Planning Board? And would, would we attend with the, with the support of, the bo of our board? Unless this well, board made a motion and voted on Carson being yeah, right. Is that right? Who's attending? I, mean, I, I could attend that meeting. But I think we need to go in with a formal letter stating right. our well, position. Well, this is what I'm getting at. That can be delivered so that you know no individual has and to present it. I'll make a motion to vote to have Brian Rose sign a letter on behalf of the planning board, thanking them for the notification of the regional impact of the proposed project at whatever map and lot number, and informing them that the planning board has significant concerns about traffic issues that have arisen along. 114 between White Ave and Donald Street as the result of Bedford commercial construction. As a result, yes. we would like significant consideration given to traffic studies that include the Donald the White Ave intersection and encompass potential modifications of the intersection at New Boston Road and Donald Street at the level of the intersection of the Hannaford supermarket. And I'd be happy I'd, to attend a meeting with you, Colin. Okay. I mean, I'd like to see an analysis done from St. A's Drive all the way to 101. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to amend that, but I would like the letter to... The problem is really starting at White. Well, the thing is, right, why you might want to ask for St. A's is if you include that in the traffic study. You're in Gostown now. Well, it helps us yeah. when it goes to our 10-year plan of trying to get another exit in there because it's already within a study. Yeah, but White, I, I'm reluctant to make them come into Gostown to do it. And Southern New Hampshire planning does count, so I think, at that intersection anyways. That's why I sort of said White Ave, it's Bedford. And I don't think right. the Bedford planning right. board can object to a request that the next intersection be <laughs> included. Well, yeah, but we're talking about a regional impact. Well, All right. So why yeah. should we limit ourselves and, and to that, Bedford? All right. Yeah. That's, okay. that's, that's, that's the point. If it's a regional impact, mm -hmm. it's a regional impact because it, it impacts beyond Bedford. It right. impacts Goffstown, and that's why I didn't know. So when I said White Ave, at White Ave and St. A's Drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Well, we may be, I don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot here because they're going to say, well, that's during the morning commute only and the store is not open at that time of the day for, for shoppers. Did we have to be careful how <coughs> hard we press huh? the issue? I, I'm just traffic 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 report issues. Issues. I didn't say what time of day. I said traffic, traffic issues. Traffic study will bring all that out. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. just being yeah. devil's yeah. advocate. And I think our letter should say we also want to be copied on all future correspondence relative to this project. Yeah. Okay. Because so, you'll you'll you, you'll want to look at the plan because they have a beautiful roundabout as the entrance in Donald Street. I still can't get over. They approved a supermarket with one entrance. Did you make a, a motion, Barbara? I did. And I'll second Barbara's motion. Can you have a letter ready for us for that to be able to take to that meeting, a copy of it? I will. Good. <laughs> <laughs> as long as somebody I, else is I taking have it. to now. So <laughs> is Paulus go Are you going? I'm going too. Okay. Uh, if my thing was who can yeah, who can attend because I couldn't. Uh -huh. Tim and I will go read him uh, the right. I just have to send uh, some uh, other commitment. Of course, we'll one person. But uh, we'll do the good one. Well, good so. planning board member, bad planning board member. <laughs> no, I'll be the now, bad now, one. Tim, calm down. I'll be the bad one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll have open Double gun permits by then. Approved by the legislature. <laughs> I have a, I have a oh, permit to carry a concealed weapon. I don't need to worry about it. Whatever. Okay. 
I think it's a good idea that we do that too. I do too. I've been thinking about this for a couple of days. Is that, is that the it's only a, item? It's the main road into the town. And yeah, there was another correspondence thing on the bottom of our. And thing. you want the improvement similar to the Hannaford? She said Hannaford. So. I don't know. Do I even want to? Should I take that on? No, 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 no. You don't want to. No, let's not. Do you don't want to bring up Hannah? Is this the yeah. is this the only thing on that agenda for them that night, or are we gonna have to sit uh, around waiting? Think has a in the correspondence is a copy of everything. It starts at seven, and it's like it first says. on. I believe it's okay. first. There's on. There's like three things that were. This application is first on the agenda. They're doing a lot line adjustment too, or a subdivision. Okay. Well, they're doing the consolidation. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be there. My wife's daycare meeting. is right next door, so I no, I've already been nice. involved with oh, it. So I'm not going to the meeting. They've already heard me. Yeah, it's all this. How about item D on your correspondence? What is that? We don't have that. <coughs> on the packet on, the, on our table tonight. Yeah. I got more paper than I know what to do with. What is that for um, contaminated soil or something? Whoa. Okay. Yeah. One of remediation at. So they want to do test. 566. No. 566 Mass Road. I don't know. Former. Pernardville Mobile. That's on the corner of Daniel Plummer Road and Mast Road. So they want to do remedi groundwater remediation there? DES wrote them a letter. Groundwater so management they're permit. They're liable. For a period of five years to monitor the effects of discharges of petro gonna, petroleum hydrocarbons. Were those for the discharges they had about a year year ago or so? Yeah. Okay. So they're just doing they're just yeah. gonna do a groundwater monitoring yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, gets a little more serious than that. I think but, that, that. but we've just been notified of it. They're proceeding yeah. with the yeah. monitoring. And that's pretty typical um, for a lot of these older gas stations. I know that my neighborhood, one across the street from me, is also under a regulated monitoring program. Well, they had a spill a little while ago. The one across the street had a big one. Yeah. Okay. Tim. I don't want to take this on forever. Um, do, do do we want to schedule a workshop sometime for the planning board to maybe discuss ways to streamline the process here to try to shorten the application process and maybe have more stuff go through TRC prior to it being brought to the planning board? Some of these issues that resolve re re around DES permits and, and alteration of terrain permits and some of the engineering that works through the Department of um, Public Works. Maybe some of these things could be ironed out prior to our meeting, and we wouldn't have to have so many meetings on all these subjects over and over. Maybe we need a workshop to just discuss it amongst ourselves and see if there's suggestions other planning board members might have to. Well, I think it's a my great suggestion idea. would be that it would might happen in April if we can work our schedule in such a fashion that we can have an oh, evening. Indeed. With that on the agenda. With that on the agenda, and that, on, that only on the agenda that evening. Uh, or other types of planning issues, not just that, but on whether a, it be the development regulations or whether it be. Well, I would just, I'd like to maybe just have that the only subject of the night, Alan. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yes, things that the board well, I think wants Alan to was work saying on. That it looks like we might have an open meeting in April. Yeah. April 14th, you want to do that? We can say the next available means April 28th. The only reason I'm hesitant to do that is I have a feeling that the library is not. They're not, I, they're not buying that plan on High Street. It sounded like it. Well, yeah. I just I just don't know. I, I think the March 24th date for them is pretty optimistic. So I don't know whether I don't particularly want to put out a application to convert this to a business use out to the 28th so that's the only reason I'm saying is I'm looking at what we've got going and well, whatever we schedule tonight or we just don't let anything else schedule well I mean we can we can sort of do it as it comes up because well, it's have, just us March right? 24th ought to be plenty of time for them to look at that it site plan. oh yeah the drainage I mean, study is six is parking nothing. spaces for the drainage sake. study is nothing okay. it's, it's like it's how many square feet of, of surface a, area it's, it's all existing yeah so just, they're not doing any more paving. Two hour drainage, right? Not very much. Yeah, no, it's just that you're supposed to have your plan in by a week before. Well, well they're going to have their, they're going to have to get it in probably Monday or Tuesday because yeah. this coming Monday yeah. or Tuesday. 
They, Which, they don't get it. I, I told Kathy right here. Because we need time to make comments she's so got that a your short, comments short, get mailed short to Short time frame to get it done. Mm -hmm. The library needs their time, too, which they meet on Wednesday. So it's either Monday or Tuesday that they got to get it in. Yep. Uh, Tim? Mr. Chair, are we going to require an engineering stamp on this plan we have before us for High Street? That it's it's only an architect's rendering. Don't we need, we need an engineering stamp on this? State law does not require it. Okay, I'm just asking because I've never seen one without Nothing one. in our ordinance that requires it. I believe, I believe yeah. the, the development regs well, no, well, allow for Maybe not in our ordinance, but you can't practice engineering in the state of New Hampshire without a stamp. If you can drainage analysis and drainage reports, well, then, you're, then you're practicing can, engineering. We, we can argue that until the cows come in. Oh, it's an easy okay. one. It doesn't take much argument. No, I know. <laughs> I, I believe yeah. the development regs allow for it to be either an engineer drawing or an architect's stamp drawing. But if we're going to get drainage calculations for this parking area, it's going to have to require an engineer's stamp, correct? Yeah. Yes. There's yeah. no way around it. Well, is it is it sufficient to review the old drainage re report? And it was a whole different program. Yeah. Different, it's a whole different layout. The drainage is based on a totally different parking design that wrapped all the way around the building. Yeah. Fully yeah. paved. Mm -hmm. The easement wasn't in place either. Yeah, it was a totally different site design, site plan. So we just want to be sure that whatever we, is submitted for drainage calculations, we're going to want an engineering stamp on that. We're not going to just. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the Did the town do any for the parking lot they built? Did we do a drainage study for that? Yes. No. We made Fournier do it. Right. Yes, we did. So you may, you may have to let Kathy know that in case they want to move their meeting out. And if they move their meeting out, it's April 28th. April 14th, we'll have a workshop meeting. Yeah, oh well. If That's it. I believe uh, there is some conceptual things that may want to come in that be on April 28th. But I can tell them about a shotgun or sidearm. I'll take my gun. I mean, <laughs> plans change. I know that that's from police chief. They, they, do, they do change, but the, the idea is if, if, we, if we wait for applicants, if the applicants know that April 14th we're having a workshop, staff workshop, and Nothing planning else. board workshop, that's it. Nothing else is happening. Well, can I? Yes. There's also the Blackbriar Woods issue that's going around, that people are trying to accommodate that as soon as possible. So I'm looking at that coming up. On the 24th. On the 24th, and if that on the 24th, I think having that reheard on the April 28th might have some ramifications. Are, are people hoping to have this wrapped up on the 24th? Blackbird? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's okay. my All right. Okay. All right. But, but okay. speaking to that, Barbara, if they don't have it wrapped up on the 24th, then if they have to wait, that's not our fault because we have a workshop scheduled in between. Yeah, we shouldn't put off our other work. Yeah, put off our All work. I'm saying is it doesn't make any difference to us as a board whether we make it the 14th or the 28th. So I'm looking at the applications that are before us that might need a continuance as to which date works better for them because it doesn't make any difference to us. Uh, That's it, true. It, it, 14th, executive decision, 14th. And okay. I would like to invite the Conservation Commission and the Public Works Department to be present if they wish to. Oh yeah, directly affects them. Can't drag them here. Because anything we talk about may rely on some input from those folks. Conservation Commission will be represented. I know, but <laughs> sometimes they don't always agree with you, Carlos. <laughs> Go ahead. Frank, you s you're going to send that letter to Rick Sawyer, so he'll have right? it prior to us getting there, right? You know, we all have different. Yeah, you're, you're going to need right. to, so he'll um, have it in hand to be able to read it. So oh, he knows we'll be there. Yeah. Bill, any comments on this? Uh, any other department we want to? ZBA? Yeah, ZBA. Well, they've had their shot at the apple. Um, and I think probably next fall we would do that again for anything that they see in relative to zoning. But certainly, yes, all, all people I think should be. Well, and on the 14th. Yes. But zoning is not going to help us streamline our process. Well, that's true. We don't need to have the ZBA here to streamline our process. Our process involves yeah. uh, <laughs> DES, wetlands, uh, conservation, engineering. It does not involve ZBA because they make their decisions over there in the next dimension, and we do our thing here. So <laughs> let's do our thing and not – we don't need okay. to have ZBA here. 
It's actually, it's actually right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the All same right. dimension. All right. No, different dimension. Uh, but if, if, if that's, if if they wish to come, I'm not going to put them out of the room. Okay? Put that back on. I prefer to invite rather than be yeah. called on the no, carpet for not inviting. Applicants feel. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, the top the topic for the discussion on that night is going to be how do we streamline streamline our process? Our process. And we'll and the chances are we're going to hear about it. And it wouldn't hurt Brian if he had a few ideas to bring into the meeting to yes. get discussion well, stimulated. Why not rather than calling it streamlining? We're going but to talk streamlining. Makes well, let's reforming the process. Improve. Just an, a review of the process as it exists. You, I would think it would be a, re, a review so of the process. That's what you're doing is a review of the process. Streamlining yeah. you're right, it raises it some implication yeah. that there's an intended result. Yeah. Well, the intended result are the insinuation is we take too long. What insinuation? From all uh, applicants. Lots of people. Yeah. But you anyway. know what? There isn't a planning board in the state and I would suggest anywhere that doesn't hear from an applicant that planning boards are take too long, that there are too many requirements, and the process is too expensive. So I would want everybody to remember that. This is not, this is by its nature set up as a process of one group requiring another group to meet certain requirements. And that makes it somewhat adversarial by its nature. It doesn't need to be adversarial, but it is certainly two bodies, whether it's an applicant or a planning board, coming from different perspectives. As a planning board member, you have a responsibility to enforce the zoning ordinances and the regulations that the town has adopted. People may not like the fact that a town has adopted zoning, but this town has, and the applicant has an interest in making the application as quickly and as inexpensively as possible. So by its nature, you have a process for which it would be very unusual for everybody to agree it's wonderful. Mm. So please keep that in mind as you discuss this, because just because you have somebody on the other side of the table saying, yes, that's a great idea, doesn't mean that it's one you should follow in a, if you're going to take your responsibilities to enforce code responsibly. I agree, Barbara, but it, I think it's also healthy for any organization to take a step back every once in a while and reevaluate how they conduct business and that, look, for, look for ways to, to improve the process. I and I think have, that's all we're doing here. I don't have any issue with that. I think we met with the ZBA in regards to the ordinance, and my recollection is we went through this process with, with Jim on the board within the last two years also. We went through the process with chickens. No, we're not talking about chickens. No, I ordered you no that roosters. subscription, by the way. Oh, I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. All right. Anything else? Um, this town is a cakewalk. Right. I just downloaded an ordinance, a development regulation that I, the town unnamed, 278 pages. Well, you know what? After our workshop, we may find we may come to the conclusion there are no improvements that can be made. So. We might make everything longer. <laughs> okay. Now, motion to adjourn. Yes, yeah, second. Yes, I second. thought I heard that. Motion. Second. Who who made the motion? It was Carl. 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 Did. Seconded by Carlos. To adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Corey. Any abstentions? I thought it was Corey. Motion carried. <laughs> <laughs>